Domo minasan, Mato desu. Hey guys, my name is Matt and welcome to lesson one of the Game Gengu Genki series. In this video, we're going to learn some of the absolute basic things that you need to know in order to craft a sentence in Japanese. Today, we're going to be looking at three particles the wa particle, the ka question marker, and the no particle. So we're going to cover all of the grammar used in lesson one of the Genki textbook, but we're going to use real context seen in Japanese video games so you can look at the language being actually used in native context, native media, and why it might be used in that particular situation. So the very first piece of grammar that we're learning here is the wa topic marker. So this is one of the most fundamental particles in the Japanese language, and you can see that it's written with the hiragana for ha, but it's actually pronounced as wa, always, uh, when it's used as a topic marker. So what does that mean, topic marker? Because it can be a little bit confusing for people coming at Japanese from languages like English, where we don't really have a lot of these type of things like topics and subjects and things. It's really, really simple. Wa is just used to kind of put a title on the conversation that you're having. Think about it like the title of a book or a title of an essay. That tells you what this whole story is about. That's what the wa particle does. It lets the listener know what the speaker is talking about, what the main kind of box that this conversation is happening in. So this is often translated as kind of like a as for. Back in this very simple way of saying who I am. Watashi wa matto desu. As for me, is Matt, or as for me, I am Matt. So we can see who the topic of this sentence is. Who am I talking about? Me, watashi wa, and then we have Matto desu, am Matt. Naruhodo. Kore wa omoshiroi. So like we can see here in this example, Naruhodo, I see. Kore wa, as for this, omoshiroi, it's interesting. Kore wa sugoi, sugoi zo! And just like we see here, kore wa sugoi. So as for this, that's amazing. So it's used to mark the topic of the conversation, what you're talking about. So as for. So like seen here in 13 Sentinels, right? The wa particle is used to show what the topic of the conversation is. So here, this girl character, she says, Anata wa? So as for you, so here it's kind of asking like, who are you, right? As for you, the topic being you, she wants to know some more information. So the kind of boyish character here replies with, Boku wa Ida Tetsuya desu. As for me, I'm Ida Tetsuya. So that's pretty straightforward, right? When you want to show the listener what it is that you're talking about, what the topic of the conversation that you're talking about is, you just mark that by following whatever the topic is with the wa particle. Watashi wa Matto desu. As for me, I'm Matt. Kare wa tensai da yo. As for him, he is a genius. Kare wa tensai da yo. The interesting thing about this wa topic marker is that you don't have to have it in every single sentence, right? It's actually quite unnatural to use it all the time. If I always said, watashi wa matto desu, watashi wa matto desu, watashi wa matto desu, it would eventually come off as a little bit textbooky, a little bit robotic. And the reason for that is, if it's clear who you're talking about, if it's clear what you're talking about, if it's clear what the topic of the conversation is, then you don't have to use it. So, for example, I could just say, Matto desu. If, for example, I'm with a group of friends, we're all introducing ourselves, and it's my turn to introduce myself, well, it's obvious to everyone that I'm talking about myself, so I don't need to say, Watashi wa Matto desu. I can simply just say, Matto desu. So it's used when you really want to highlight what it is you're talking about. So, like in this example sentence right here, so here, this girl in black hair, she says that she will make stew for the other character tomorrow. So if we didn't have ashita wa as for tomorrow, and if we just had the sentence without it, it wouldn't be clear when this stew is being made. It would just be stew wo tsukute ageru, I will make you stew. But when, it's not clear. That's why here, ashita wa as for tomorrow, I will make you stew. So here it makes it clear what you're talking about. So you can actually kind of think of this as almost like adding emphasis to something, right? Because you're really bringing attention to, as for me, 
Watashi wa. So you might see it used, for example, like here in Attack on Titan, where here Armin's really trying to emphasize that Eren is not an enemy of humanity. So hopefully that's relatively simple. This wa particle you use after the topic of the sentence to show what it is you're talking about. Think of it like a title to the conversation. What is the header of the conversation you're currently having? That is expressed here with the wa particle. The next piece of grammar we're learning here is des. Now, you've already seen this used in a few examples already, and this is kind of the polite marker used at the end of a sentence to just express that it's polite, like we saw in the expression watashi wa matto desu. Well, you could just say watashi wa matto. You don't have to say the desu. This desu here makes it a little bit more polite. Latex forest desu. Midi kirito desu. You can add this to the end of any sentence that's not a verb or any kind of expression that's already expressing politeness because you can't like double up on politeness, right? You just have one thing to express the politeness at the end of the sentence. So here, des would be the thing to make the sentence polite. So very simply, this is kind of like an is or an am, but being in a polite way of stating the fact. For example, you could say "omoshiroi," interesting, or you could say "omoshiroi desu." Omoshiroi desu. The same thing. It's just being polite. Oh, that's interesting. So perhaps you want to be talking with someone, and you don't want to be too casual. You don't want to be too rude, but you still want to come across as you know nice and polite. Then you would attach this "des" to the end just to make it a bit more polite. And that's why it's taught to you guys at the very, very beginning because it's always good to be polite. So you could say "watashi wa matto." However, if you want to be polite, then you should say "watashi wa matto desu." As for me, I'm Matt. So, like seen here in Final Fantasy VII Remake, the soldier is trying to be polite to his superior. It'd be very rude not to be. So here, as he hands him the phone, he says, "President, this." It is the president. So, like here in Thirteenth Sentinels again, here the student is saying to her teacher that she's okay, but she wants to be a bit polite, right? Because she's talking to a teacher. So instead of just saying "daijoubu," I'm okay. Here she says "daijoubu desu," I'm okay, but just a bit more polite. Spira ga suki desu. Again, here in Final Fantasy X, here Yuna says that she likes Spira, the world that they're in. So she says "Spira ga suki desu." So if she was speaking casually. As you may already guess, she could just say "spira ga suki," right? For example, I like pizza, pizza ga suki. But if I want to be polite, I would say "pizza ga suki desu." So simply add a des at the end to show that you're being polite. So now we've learnt two really useful pieces of language. We've learnt the wa particle to mark the topic of a sentence, and we've learnt des to make that sentence a polite sentence. So now we can put them both together and form our first sentence. This is the most fundamental of all sentence structures. Watashi wa matto des. As for me, <laughs> I'm Matt. <laughs> Something you've seen quite a lot. Let's have a look at some other examples here. Sakurako senpai, today is Thursday, isn't it? So, like here in Marco and the Galaxy Dragon, here this character says, "Kyo wa doyobi desu yo." As for today, so kyo wa, as for today, it's Saturday. Doyobi desu yo. So the yo is just adding a little bit more emphasis to the sentence, so we can just drop that for now and just look at this core sentence. Kyo wa, as for today, doyobi desu. It is Saturday. So we can see the topic of the sentence we're talking about today, and then we can see the information. It's Saturday. And like we can see here in Kingdom Hearts, we can actually see this example that I was saying before, where you don't have to say des if you don't want to be polite. For example, here Riku he just says "ore wa Riku," so "ore" is very masculine, and he says "I'm Riku." But here Kazimoto actually says "boku wa Kajimoto des." As for me, in a little bit more of a boyish way, 
I am Kajimoto. So here you can see that here in the kind of power dynamic, Riku is being a little bit more casual and rude, him using masculine language and also not using des, so he's not being polite. Whereas Kazimoto, here he's being a little bit more humble, a little bit more boyish, and being polite. Because he uses des. Hilda san te oikutsu nan desu ka? Watashi? Watashi wa 21 da kedo. Ah, otona desu ne. Anta wa? So this is super, super useful because you can use this to almost construct any sentence, right? We've seen it being used to introduce your name, but it's not limited to just that use, right? You can talk about absolutely anything. As for something, it is that, right? For example, kare wa gakusei desu. As for him, he's a student. <laughs> or like here in Nier Automata, Boktachi wa heishi desu. As for us, we are soldiers. And finally seen here in Boku no Natsu Yasumi, as for today, kyo wa, it is my atashi no, actually mother's ka chan no. So she is mum, here she is Kachan. So here she says Atashi no, and here she's kind of speaking with her kids, and so she realizes she should call herself mum, so she does that and she says Kachan instead of Atashi. Kachan no tanjobi desu. As for today, kyo wa Kachan no tanjobi desu. It is mum's birthday. Here talking about herself. So this gives off a really nice, pleasant, polite feeling. If she didn't use des, it would feel a little bit abrupt, right? Kyo wa kachan no tanjoubi. Feels a little bit more abrupt. It does make it less polite. Anata wa yasashii hito desu. So like here in Bravely Default, trying to be polite with the person you're talking with. So anata wa, as for you, yasashii hito desu. You are a nice person. So congratulations, you've now learned how to form your first sentence in Japanese. It's really simple, just whatever it is you're talking about, pizza wa, as for pizza, and then whatever you want to say, oishi desu, it is yum. So congratulations, you know how to say pizza is delicious. Or for example, maybe you want to say this video is fun, you could say kono douga wa, as for this video, tanoshi desu, it is fun. Onamai wa natsu no... So feel free to make your first sentence down in the comments sections below. Just put the topic of whatever you want to talk about, something wa, and then followed with the details with des to make it a polite sentence. Now an interesting thing here to keep in mind is, is as I said, you don't always have to use the wa particle if it's clear who or what you're talking about. Here for example, we can actually see it being used without the particle, they've just dropped the particle. Watashi, totemo ureshi desu. I, I'm very happy, right? So you don't have to say, watashi wa totemo ureshi desu, right? Here she actually makes it a little bit more casual. Maybe it's not quite as clear if she just said, totemo ureshi desu. Maybe it's not clear she's talking about herself, so she still said watashi, she just didn't say watashi wa, because it's clear. So in levels of clarity, right, the most clear would be, watashi wa, Totemo ureshi desu. As for me, I'm very happy. If you wanted to make it a little bit less clear, you could say, Watashi, totemo ureshi desu. Or if it was incredibly obvious what you were talking about already, you could just say, totemo ureshi desu. Okay, now moving on to the next particle, and here we have ka, the question particle. Honto desu ka? This one's really straightforward and simple. You simply add it to a statement to turn it into a question. That's it. So for example, the sentence that we've been learning a lot, Watashi wa matto desu, right? As for me, I'm Matt. <laughs> if, for example, you wanted to ask me, who am I? You could say, anata wa, as for you, matto desu ka? Are you Matt? Even I could say the same thing. Watashi wa matto desu ka? <laughs> am I Matt? So here you can see that just adding ka turns that statement into a question. Now, right now, we're learning polite speech. 
so try and put it after des. That makes it a polite question. There are other ways of asking questions, which we'll get into more later. But here, the polite way to ask a question would be to add desu ka at the end of a statement. So like seen here in Shenmue, if you just said kokose, this would be a very kind of direct way. It's just like a student. But here, kokose desu ka is just a little bit more of a polite way, right? Is it a student? So simply add ka to the end of a statement to turn it into a question. Now, there are actually quite a few useful different pieces of language that you can use when you're asking a question. The first is nan desu ka? So here is what is it, right? That's a very simple question. Nan desu ka? What is it? For example, like seen here in Shingeki no Kyojin, Attack on Titan, here we have Kono Kyojin wa nan desu ka? So as for this Titan, what is it? Nan desu ka? So here, nan desu ka is asking what is it? For example, kore wa nan desu ka? So what is this? Pizza desu. It's pizza. Okakusama! Or like seen again here in Marco and the Galaxy Dragon, what's your name? Namae wa, as for your name, nan desu ka, what is it? If you wanted to ask someone what their favorite food is, you could say, Sukina tabemono wa nan desu ka? Sukina tabemono wa nan desu ka? As for your favorite food, Sukina tabemono wa nan desu ka? What is it? Now, this nan right, the nan des ka, this nan part is actually comes from the word nani, what? And it can be read as both nan or nani by itself. Nani. But this nan part, you can actually add to other bits of language to make it into a little bit more of an interrogative way of asking. For example, this kanji right here. If you add this with nan, it's nanji. What time? So like seen here, nanji desu ka? What time is it? And as always, you could just say nanji, what time is it? But that's just a more casual way. Or for example, if you add it with sai for age, nan sai, this is what age? How old are you? X. Kimi nan sai da? Ah, sai desu. Nan sai desu ka? How old are you? Or for example, if you were wanting to ask someone what year student they are, right? So the word for that is nense, right? The year student. You could say, as you might guess, nan nense. What year are you at school? Just remember, if it's used connected to a piece of language, it's read as nan, nan desu ka, nanji, nansai. Or if it's used by itself or with a particle like the wa particle, then it's nani. Nani, what? Or nani ga suki, what do you like? Benkyo ga suki na no? Boku wa suki da kedo. Ore wa kirai da na. Ja, gakkou no jigyo de nani ga suki? Okay, we have one final piece of Japanese essential grammar that you need to learn in order to form a basic sentence. And that is the next and final particle that we're going to be covering today, the NO particle. This beautiful looking round shape is the NO particle. And this is used very simply to connect two nouns together. For example, watashi no namae my name. So watashi, I, namae name, my name, right? It's turning these two nouns, I and name, and it's making it into one, my name. Or for example, matto no pizza, Matt's pizza. So it's called the possessive particle because as you can see, even in these examples I just gave you, in English, we would add this tss, right? Matt's pizza, my name. You can see this feeling of possession, right? It's the name that I possess. It's the pizza that I possess. It's my pizza. And that's true for a lot of the situations. And so it's a really nice way of thinking about it, that it's the possessive particle. But just know that what it's actually doing fundamentally is it's turning two nouns into one. So just like we saw here in Metal Gear Solid, ore no namae wa David. As for my name, it's David. Boku no namae wa Welkin. Kimi tachi wa 
Again, here in Valkyria Chronicles, we can see Boku no Namae wa as for my name, and then we have Werukin, I'm Welkin. And if we go a little bit further, like here in Death Stranding, we can see here. So that is my one day. So, watashi no ichinichi, that means it's the day that belongs to me, right? My day. But then we can go even further with ima no watashi no ikikata da. So right now we have three nouns that are turning them all into one. And that's what the no particle here is doing. It's making these nouns into one. And so it's modifying the last noun, which here is ikikata, so the way of living. What kind of way of living? Watashi no ikikata my way of living. And what kind of my way of living? Ima no watashi no ikikata. My way of living right now. So you can see that it's kind of a progression, right? It's a box and the box gets bigger and bigger. First you start with ikikata, then it's watashi no ikikata, and then it's ima no watashi no ikikata. So you can see that it's progressively adding more detail to the last noun in progression from the closest. My way of living right now. So you may have already noticed, but one interesting thing about this no particle is generally the first noun is a restriction on the main noun, which is the last noun in this group. For example, watashi no namae. The most important thing is the name. What kind of name? My name. I'm a professor at university. Daigaku no sensei. So daigaku is the university, sensei is the teacher. So, what's the main noun here? Teacher. And what type of teacher? One at a university. So you can see that it connects these two nouns together. Just remember that the last noun, that is the main idea, the main noun. So while it can be very useful to remember it as the possessive particle, like in English where we add just an S, right? Matt's hat, Matto no boshi, your school, anata no gakko. But it doesn't always work that way where it shows this possession, at least not in the way that English does. Okay, so let's have a look at all of the language that we've just learned today in this lesson and have a look at this example clip and see how all of these pieces of language are being used. So let's just pay attention to the language that we learned. The first part here, koko wa. Koko means here, so as for here. So we can see here the character's kind of woken up and he doesn't know where he is. So he says, hmm? as for here, right? Where are we? So he's making here the topic of this conversation. Why would you do that? Because you're asking information about the place you're in. Where are we? Koko wa. And then he says, Iya, no. Ima wa. So ima means now. So now he's changing the topic of the sentence. It used to be this place, koko wa. But then he said, no. Ima wa. So here he's changing the topic of the sentence from this place to this time. Ima. So as for now, itsu desu ka? When is it? So we've learnt deska, remember, a polite question, and itsu here is asking about the time. What time? So itsu deska is what time is it? So as for now, ima wa itsu deska. What time is it? Ima. So did you notice how the character didn't say ima wa? Because it's already clear what we're talking about. The topic of the sentence has already been established here when he said it the first time. Ima wa itsu deska. So she doesn't have to say ima wa again because it's already clear what the topic of this conversation now is. However, she changes it. So instead of talking about the time now, here she now changes the topic to today. So she makes it really clear what she's talking about. As for today, kyo wa. And then she says, jugatsu no. So jugatsu means October, and then the no particle here is showing that possession. Now, we can already kind of guess what's going to come next, because what generally is kind of connected together with month? Generally, the next thing is a day, right? So we could imagine that here she's likely saying 10月の, and then followed by a date for a day. 
For example, today is Niju Sanichi, the 23rd, right? So maybe she would say, Ju Gatsu no Niju Sanichi, the 23rd day of the 10th month. And he's not happy with that. He doesn't want to know about today. So he says, So janak de, not that. Ima wa, right now, again, he's talking about time. So he's going back to the topic of time. Ima wa, nan nen desu ka? What year is it? So again, here we saw the nan, this time with nen for year. Nan nen, what year? And then a polite question, desu ka? Nan nen desu ka? As for now, ima wa, nan nen desu ka? So here you can already tell something weird's going on kind of time travelly because that's not a normal question you would ask people, right? As for now, what year is it? <laughs> Very kind of back to the future. And the girl replies with, nisen niju yon nen desu. It is the year 2024. So she's being polite, and we can see that because she adds des to the end of the sentence. However, the guy then doesn't add des because he's kind of talking to himself. So you don't need to use des when you're talking to yourself. He's like, ugh, 2024, huh? So that was a very interesting kind of combination of some of the language that we covered today, right? We learned the wa particle for showing the topic of a sentence. Hopefully you guys are all very clear on that. We've learned how des is used at the end of a statement to make it a polite statement. We've learned how you can add ka at the end of a sentence to make it a question. So to turn a statement into a question, just add ka. And we've learned how the no particle turns nouns into one noun. It combines them together with the final noun in the kind of series of nouns being the main idea, the main noun. So what's the most important thing? So I have a question for you. Which of the three nouns do you think is the main noun in this sentence? Nihon no daigaku no sensei desu. So what do you guys think? Nihon is Japan, daigaku is university, and sensei is teacher. So hopefully you guys remember the last noun is the main noun. So what's the most important thing? Is the most important thing about being in Japan? No. Is the most important thing being at university? No. The most important noun here is the last noun, being a teacher, sensei desu. And what kind of teacher? A teacher at university. And what kind of university teacher? A teacher at university in Japan. So I hope this video helped make these first pieces of Japanese language a little bit easier for you guys to remember and to kind of conceptualize. We did come across quite a bit of difficult language in this lesson, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is just those fundamental pieces that we learned. So don't worry too much about not remembering things like a vigilante corp. That's not so important. But just make sure that you remember what the wa particle does, how it's used, how des is used, how ka is used at the end of a sentence, and how no is used in between nouns. So thank you so much guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'd like to give an enormous thank you to all of the supporters on Patreon for helping support this channel and helping making this channel something that's going to be a long-term thing, especially thanks to all of your guys' support on Patreon. So if you want to come join us on the Game Gingo Discord community, hang out with a bunch of like-minded Japanese learners in a really relaxing, not at all elitist way, just having fun, enjoying Japanese, making friends, having a laugh, and really just enjoying the journey of studying Japanese, then feel free to come join us on Patreon and say hello in the Game Gingo Discord. I'm almost always around for a chat, so if you ever want to just have a chat with me, say hi or something, I'm usually always hanging around and happy to talk. So thanks guys for watching, I hope this video was helpful, and as always, I'll see you all in the next video. See ya.